Totalitarianism or totalitarian state is a concept used by some political scientists in which the state holds total authority over the society and seeks to control all aspects of public and private life wherever possible. The concept of totalitarianism was first developed in a positive sense in the 1920s by the Imad German jurist, and later Nazi academic, Karl Schmitt and Italian fascists. Schmitt used the term, Total Zort in his influential work on the legal basis of an all-powerful state. The concept became prominent in Western anti-communist political discourse during the Cold War era, in order to highlight perceived similarities between Nazi Germany and other fascist states on the one hand, and Soviet Communist Party states on the other. Other movements and governments have also been described as totalitarian. The leader of the historic Spanish reactionary conservative movement called the Spanish Confederation of the Autonomous Right declared his intention to give Spain a true unity, a new spirit, a totalitarian polity, and went on to say democracy is not an end but a means to the conquest of the new state. When the time comes either Parliament submits or we will eliminate it. Etymology the notion of totalitarianism as a total political power by state was formulated in 1923 by Giovanni Amendola, who described Italian fascism as a system fundamentally different from conventional dictatorships. The term was later assigned a positive meaning in the writings of Giovanni Gentile, Italia Euro unregistered trademark s most prominent philosopher and leading theorist of fascism. He used the term a euro e totalitario euro to refer to the structure and goals of the new state, which was to provide the a euro a e total representation of the nation and total guidance of national goals a euro he described totalitarianism as a society in which the ideology of the state had influence, if not power, over most of his citizens. According to Benito Mussolini, this system politicizes everything spiritual and human, everything within the state nothing outside the state, nothing against the state. He stated that we must finish once and for all with the neutrality of chess. We must condemn once and for all the formula chess for the sake of chess, like the formula art for art's sake. We must organize shock brigades of chess players, and begin immediate realization of a five-year plan for chess. Early Concepts and Use one of the first to use the term totalitarianism in the English language was the Austrian writer Franz Balk now in his 1938 book The Communist International, in which he commented that it more united the Soviet and German dictatorships than divided them. Tsang Man Rhee who would later become the first president of South Korea, used the term totalitarianism in his book Japan Inside Out to categorize the Japanese rule over many Asian nations against the democratic world where individuals are of greater importance than the society itself. Isabel Patterson, in The God of the Machine, used the term in connection with the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. F. A. Hayek helped develop the idea of totalitarianism in his classic defense of economic competition The Road to Serfdom. In his introduction, Hayek contrasts Western Anglo values with Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler, stating that the conflict between the National Socialist right, and the left in Germany is the kind of conflict that will always arise between rival socialist factions. He later conflates Germany, Italy and Russia going on to say that the history of these countries in the years before the rise of the totalitarian system showed few features with which we are not familiar. During a 1945 lecture series entitled The Soviet Impact on the Western World, the pro-Soviet British historian E. H. Carr claimed that the trend away from individualism and towards totalitarianism is everywhere unmistakable, and that Marxism-Leninism was much the most successful type of totalitarianism, as proved by Soviet industrial growth and the Red Army's role in defeating Germany. Only the blind and incurable could ignore the trend towards totalitarianism, said Carr. Karl Popper, in The Open Society and Its Enemies and the Poverty of Historicism, articulated an influential critique of totalitarianism, in both works, he contrasted the open society of liberal democracy with totalitarianism, and argued that the latter is grounded in the belief that history moves toward an immutable future in accordance with knowable laws. In The Origins of Totalitarianism, Hannah Arendt argued that Nazi and state communist regimes were new forms of government, and not merely updated versions of the old tyrannies. 
according to Arendt, the source of the mass appeal of totalitarian regimes is their ideology, which provides a comforting, single answer to the mysteries of the past, present, and future. For Nazism, all history is the history of race struggle. And, for Marxism, all history is the history of class struggle. Once that premise is accepted, all actions of the state can be justified by appeal to nature or the law of history, justifying their establishment of authoritarian state apparatus. In addition to Arendt, many scholars from a variety of academic backgrounds and ideological positions have closely examined totalitarianism. Among the most noted commentators on totalitarianism are Raymond Aron, Lawrence Aronson, Franz Balknow, Karl Dietrich Brecher, Zbigniew Brzezinski, Robert Conquest, Karl Joachim Friedrich, Eckhard Jesse, Leopold Labedz, Walter Lacquer, Claude Lefort, Juan Linz, Richard Le Paragraph Wengal, Karl Popper, Richard Pipes, Leonard Shapiro, and Adam Ulam. Each one of these describes totalitarianism in slightly different ways. They all agree, however, that totalitarianism seeks to mobilize entire populations in support of an official state ideology, and is intolerant of activities which are not directed towards the goals of the state, entailing repression or state control of business, labor unions, churches or political parties. Differences between authoritarian and totalitarian regimes the term an authoritarian regime denotes a state in which the single power holder, an individual dictator, a committee or a junta or an otherwise small group of political elite, monopolizes political power. However, a totalitarian regime attempts to control virtually all aspects of the social life including economy, education, art, science, private life and morals of citizens. The officially proclaimed ideology penetrates into the deepest reaches of societal structure and the totalitarian government seeks to completely control the thoughts and actions of its citizens. Totalitarianism is an extreme version of authoritarianism. Authoritarianism primarily differs from totalitarianism in that social and economic institutions exist that are not under governmental control. Building on the work of Yale political scientist Juan Linz, Paul C. Sondel of the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs has examined the characteristics of authoritarian and totalitarian dictators and organized them in a chart. Sondel argues that while both authoritarianism and totalitarianism are forms of autocracy, they differ in key dichotomies. Unlike their bland and generally unpopular authoritarian brethren, totalitarian dictators develop a charismatic mystique and a mass based, pseudo-democratic interdependence with their followers via the conscious manipulation of a prophetic image. Concomitant role conceptions differentiate totalitarians from authoritarians. Authoritarians view themselves as individual beings, largely content to control, and often maintain the status quo. Totalitarian self-conceptions are largely teleological. The tyrant is less a person than an indispensable function to guide and reshape the universe. Consequently, the utilization of power for personal aggrandizement is more evident among authoritarians than totalitarians. Lacking the binding appeal of ideology, authoritarians support their rule by a mixture of instilling fear and granting rewards to loyal collaborators, engendering a kleptocracy. Thus, compared to totalitarian systems, Authoritarian systems may also leave a larger sphere for private life, lack a guiding ideology, tolerate some pluralism in social organization, lack the power to mobilize the whole population in pursuit of national goals, and exercise their power within relatively predictable limits. Cold War Era Research The political scientists Karl Friedrich and Zbigniew Brzezinski were primarily responsible for expanding the usage of the term in university social science and professional research, reformulating it as a paradigm for the Soviet Union as well as fascist regimes. Friedrich and Brzezinski argue that a totalitarian system has the following six, mutually supportive, defining characteristics, elaborate guiding ideology. Single mass party, typically led by a dictator. System of terror, using such instruments as violence and secret police. Monopoly on weapons. Monopoly on the means of communication. Central direction and control of the economy through state planning. 
totalitarian regimes in Germany, Italy and the Soviet Union had initial origins in the chaos that followed in the wake of World War I and allowed totalitarian movements to seize control of the government, while the sophistication of modern weapons and communications enabled them to effectively establish what Friedrich and Brzezinski called a totalitarian dictatorship. The German historian Karl Dietrich Brecher, whose work is primarily concerned with Nazi Germany, argues that the totalitarian typology as developed by Friedrich and Brzezinski is an excessively inflexible model, and failed to consider the A-Euro or a revolutionary dynamic A-Euro that Brecher asserts is at the heart of totalitarianism. Brecher maintains that the essence of totalitarianism is the total claim to control and remake all aspects of society combined with an all-embracing ideology, the value on authoritarian leadership, and the pretense of the common identity of state and society which distinguished the totalitarian closed understanding of politics from the open democratic understanding. Unlike the Friedrich Brzezinski definition Brecher argued that totalitarian regimes did not require a single leader and could function with a collective leadership, which led the American historian Walter Lacure to argue that Brecher's definition seemed to fit reality better than the Friedrich Brzezinski definition. Eric Hofer, in his book The True Believer, argues that mass movements like communism, fascism, and Nazism had a common trait in picturing Western democracies and their values as decadent, with people too soft too pleasure-loving and too selfish to sacrifice for a higher cause, which for them implies an inner moral and biological decay. He further claims that those movements offered the prospect of a glorious future to frustrated people, enabling them to find a refuge from the lack of personal accomplishments in their individual existence. The individual is then assimilated into a compact collective body and fact-proof screens from reality are established. Criticism and recent work with the concept Some social scientists have criticized the approach of Karl Joachim Friedrich and Zbigniew Brzezinski, arguing that the Soviet system, both as a political and as a social entity, was in fact better understood in terms of interest groups, competing elites, or even in class terms. These critics pointed to evidence of popular support for the regime and widespread dispersion of power, at least in the implementation of policy, among sectoral and regional authorities. For some followers of this pluralist approach, this was evidence of the ability of the regime to adapt to include new demands. However, proponents of the totalitarian model claim that the failure of the system to survive showed not only its inability to adapt but the mere formality of supposed popular participation. Historians of the Nazi period who are inclined towards a functionalist interpretation of the Third Reich, such as Martin Brozat, Hans Mommsen and Ian Kershaw, have been hostile or lukewarm towards the totalitarianism concept arguing that the Nazi regime was too disorganized to be considered totalitarian. In the field of Soviet history, the totalitarian concept has been disparaged by the Revisionist School, a group of mostly American left-wing historians, some of whose more prominent members are Sheila Fitzpatrick, Jerry F. Huff, William McCagg, Robert W. Thurston, and J. Arch Getty. Though their individual interpretations differ, the revisionists have argued that the Soviet state under Joseph Stalin was institutionally weak, that the level of terror was much exaggerated, and that a euro to the extent it occurred a euro it reflected the weaknesses rather the strengths of the Soviet state. Fitzpatrick argued that since to the extent that there was terror in the Soviet Union, it provided for increased social mobility, and therefore most people in the Soviet Union supported Stalin's purges as a chance for a better life rather than feeling that they were trapped in a terrorized society. Writing in 1987, Walter Lacquer said that the revisionists in the field of Soviet history were guilty of confusing popularity with morality, and of making highly embarrassing and not very convincing arguments against the concept of the Soviet Union as a totalitarian state. Lacquer argued that the revisionists' arguments with regard to Soviet history were highly similar to the arguments made by Ernst Nolte regarding German history. Lacquer asserted that concepts such as modernization were inadequate tools for explaining Soviet history while totalitarianism was not. For in a section while Furet used the term totalitarian twins in an attempt to link Stalinism and Nazism. 
totalitarianism in architecture, non-political aspects of the culture and motifs of totalitarian countries have themselves often been labeled innately totalitarian. For example, Theodore Dalrymple, a British author, physician, and political commentator, has written for City Journal that brutalist structures are an expression of totalitarianism given that their grand, concrete-based design involves destroying gentler, more human places such as gardens. In 1984, author George Orwell described the Ministry of Truth as an enormous, pyramidal structure of white concrete, soaring up terrace after terrace, 300 meters into the air. Columnist Ben McIntyre of the Times has stated that that was a prescient description of the sort of totalitarian architecture that would soon dominate the communist bloc. Another example of totalitarianism in architecture is the Panopticon, a type of institutional building designed by English philosopher and social theorist Jeremy Bentham in the late 18th century. The concept of the design is to allow a watchman to observe all inmates of an institution without their being able to tell whether or not they are being watched. It was invoked by Michel Foucault, in Discipline and Punish, as metaphor for disciplinary societies and their pervasive inclination to observe and normalize. See also, autocracy, authoritarianism, carceral state, dictatorship, inverted totalitarianism, 1984, police state, single-party state, total institution, totalitarian democracy, constitutional liberalism. References Further reading, Hannah Arendt the Origins of Totalitarianism, John A. Armstrong, The Politics of Totalitarianism, Franz Balk Now the Totalitarian Enemy, London, Faber and Faber 1940, Carl Dietrich Brecher A Euro OE The Disputed Concept of Totalitarianism, A Euro Pages 11 A Euro 33 From Totalitarianism Reconsidered Edited by Ernest A. Menz, ISBN 0-8046-9268-8. Michel Foucault, The Birth of Biopolitics, Karl Friedrich and Z.K. Brzezinski, Totalitarian Dictatorship and Autocracy, Selyu Zelev, The Fascism, 1982, Guy Hermit with Pierre Hasner and Jacques Rupnik, Totalitarisms, Abbott Gleason Totalitarianism at the Inner History of the Cold War, New York, Oxford University Press ISBN 0-19-505017-7. Jean Kirkpatrick, Dictatorships and Double Standards, Rationalism and Reason in Politics, Walter Lacure The Fate of the Revolution Interpretations of Soviet History from 1917 to the Present, London, Collier Books, ISBN 0-02-034080X. Juan Linz and Alfred Stepan, Problems of Democratic Transition and Consolidation, Southern Europe, South America, and Post-Communist Europe. Baltimore, Johns Hopkins University Press ISBN 0-8018-5157-2. Ludwig von Mises, Omnipotent Government, The Rise of the Total State and Total War, Ewan Murray, Shut Up, Tale of Totalitarianism, Stanley G. Payne, A History of Fascism, Pipes, Richard, Russia under the Bolshevik Regime, New York, Vintage Books, Random House Incorporated. ISBN A 0 394 50242 6A. Robert Jorlin Lunavas des Totalitarismes, Rudolf Rocker. Nationalism and Culture 1937, Giovanni Sartori, The Theory of Democracy Revisited, Wolfgang Sauer, National Socialism, Totalitarianism or Fascism? Pages 404 to 424 from the American Historical Review. Volume 73, Issue No. 2, December 1967. Leonard Shapiro, Totalitarianism, J. L. Tarman, The Origins of Totalitarian Democracy, Slavoj Angstrom 1 half year 3 quarters ek, Did Somebody Say Totalitarianism? Marcelo Sorskeller, A Euro OE Why Is Music So Ideological? Why Do Totalitarian States Take It So Seriously? A Personal View from History and the Social Science Caesar Euro, Journal of Musicological Research, XXVI, 2007, No. 2-3, PPA 91 Euro 122, External Links, Totalitarianism, Article on the Origin and Meaning of the Term.
gives many 20th-century examples and contrasts with authoritarianism.